sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my side. Angels descending, bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Praising my Savior. All the day long I'd like to welcome each and every one of you to our service this morning and for those watching online as well. There's some uh, family news items I'd just like to run through. This Tuesday, Club DJ for Kids ages 4 through 6 will be resuming at 6.30 <clears throat> and the material is from Child Evangelism Fellowship. I think most of this was up or maybe is still up there. Tuesday at 7.30, church board meeting. Thursday, 7 o'clock, let's get acquainted evening to uh, discuss uh, 
what we believe and anybody is uh, who's interested in the workings of the church and where you know any th input you might want to have or questions show up seven o'clock <clears throat> there are a couple samples of the 40 days of community books um, that we'll be using for the campaign at the back table and if you want to participate the cost is twenty dollars and uh, ladies if you want to be a part of the secret pal partners for this year just talk to becca anderson <clears throat> so i will invite the music team to come forward and open in prayer and lead us in some singing this morning Would you stand as we open in prayer this morning? Father God, we just thank you for this new day. Lord, this is the day that you have made, and we are rejoice and are glad in it. And we thank you for this new year in which we can serve you. And we thank you that you are our God, you are a faithful God, you are omnipotent, almighty, you are our defender, our anchor, our rock, you are, the, you are our refuge, and we run to you, Father. And this morning, may our praise and our worship be acceptable in your sight, Lord. We love you and we thank you that you are our faithful one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Philippians 2 verses 9 to 11, it states, Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in heaven and on those on earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Worship as we sing, what a beautiful name.
Lord, I come to you. Let my heart be changed, renewed, flowing from the grace that I found in you. Lord, I've come to know the weaknesses I see in me will be swept away by the power of your love. Holy Ghost, let your love surround me. Bring me near, draw me to your side. And as I wait, I'll rise up like the eagle, and I will soar with you. Your spirit leads me on in the power of your love. Lord, unveil my eyes, let me see. Thank you, music team, for leading us this morning in worship and song. And uh, we're just going to continue to worship. I think we're just going to change the order a little bit here. And I'm going to ask uh, Frank to come and lead us in some prayer time at this time. Thank you, Frank. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20 says, For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him the amen is spoken by us in the glory of God. Now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anoints, he anointed us, set set his seal in, of worship on us and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit of guarantee for, our, for what is to come. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you throne this morning. We thank you. We praise you for your grace, for your mercy. We thank you for your promises that you had made and that in you that we the amen is spoken through us, and Lord, that you have uh, given us your spirit of a better of the guarantee and the down payment that we have in you, what is to come. 
And Lord, we thank you that you will keep your promises. And Lord, this morning, we just want to come before you with confidence, with the assurance that we have in you, that you hear us. And Lord, we just want to bring some uh, family across to you that, um, Lord, there's still we dealing with sicknesses in the, this congregation. We just pray, pray for healing. And I just want to bring Annie before you as she's going to have a, uh, knee surgery, you just would undertake for her, and also for uh, want to continue pray for uh, Jake as he's dealing with uh, anxiety. I just pray that you will undertake for him and give him the strength and the peace that he needs in you. And uh, Lord, we just want to thank you that you hear us, and uh, we just we ask for recovering. And Lord, there's uh, many more that perhaps are here that they're struggling with sickness or. Uh, none spoken that uh, you would just undertake and Lord we are in need of your help and in this time of trouble and for those that are having the cold and sore throat and many other things that's going on we just, uh, Lord just pray for healing and Lord also want to pray for our government as they're making decisions and they, they pray that they would make righteous decisions for this country and you know uh, that uh, would glorify you. And Lord, also I pray for this congregation as we uh, thinking of this going through this 40 day uh, community and engagement and just pray that you would give us a heart to uh, have the heart for other people and to engage with other people and with each other and, and just give us guidance how we can be a part of it. And also want to pray for the church board as they're making decisions and that would, you would help them along and uh, guide them and throw them in your spirit. And also for the kids club, as they're starting, I just pray that you would guide there and, and uh, that there would be kids and you want to minister to the kids and the young. Lord, I just want to thank you and I praise you. And I just pray that you would uh, speak to Charlie this morning and uh, give him the strength and the courage to speak and, and also... Uh, uh, the strength in his voice. And Lord, we just uh, pray that you would anoint this service in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Frank, for leading us this morning in prayer. And uh, yeah, just pardon uh, the frog in my throat this morning. I just want you to know I did do a, a rapid test this morning, and I'm all good. It is just a frog in the throat, and so that's why I'm here this morning. I'm just going to take some extra precautions because I don't want to spread anything. But thank you for being here today on a cold day, and I appreciate this church family. I uh, really do. And uh, so we're just going to continue to worship the Lord as we give our offering this morning. I'll ask if we have a couple ushers come at this time this morning. Will you bow with me? We thank you for your provision, Father, and we just pray that you will continue to uh, stir us to be generous people, that we will give back to your work here and as we touch people around the world. May you bless each gift and each giver, we pray. Amen. Thank you for your offering. Thank you, Hazel, for the offertory. Uh, Randy and Nellie have a special for us at this time. 
Thank you, guys. Um, so this song is Prize Worth Fighting For. And so I looked at the, the meaning behind it. And this guy he's, who wrote it, he said, there's two, there's two questions. What would, you do, what would you do when your life is so hard that you're tempted to lose your faith and in God? And is it really worth following Jesus? And the answer is yes, it is worth fight, follow, following Jesus. And we can have a hope that is bigger than our circumstances and Jesus Christ is the price that we're fighting for. So I just hope this can be a blessing to you guys. Amen. Lately been down so low My faith seems to come and go some days, Father, I don't know How did my love go cold? You help me to see again This world is not the end Jesus, my sweetest friend You're worth the suffering your love is my reward Your love is my reward When every day is just another struggle Every choice is an act of war Gotta pray, gotta press on to the prize Worth fighting for When it feels like I never make it When my heart is crying out for more Gotta pray, gotta press on to the prize Worth fighting for On. Your promise keeps me strong I know I'll win this race With your unfailing grace Your love is my reward Your love is my reward When every day is just another struggle Every choice is an act of war Gotta pray, gotta press on to the prize Worth fighting for When it feels like I can never make it When my heart's crying out for more Gotta pray, gotta press on to the prize Worth fighting for Your love is my reward The prize worth fighting for Jesus your worth my own. Your love is my reward. Your love is my reward. When every day is just another struggle, every choice is an act of war. Gotta pray, gotta press on to the prize. Worth fighting for. When it feels like I'll never make it, when my heart's crying out for more. Songs in the prize, what fighting for? Every day is just another struggle. Every choice is an act of war. Gotta pray, gotta pray. I gotta pray. Gotta pray, gotta press on to the prize. What fighting for? Thank you. What a great song. What a great message in that song. Truly, 
God is worth fighting for. Our faith in Christ is worth everything, worth everything. We have uh, classes for kids this morning. Thank you, kids, for being here. Thank you, teachers, for being here and blessing the kids by teaching them about God downstairs. Pastor uh, Tom Wrightville tells a true story about prayer. He says that when he was pastoring in Missouri, as they were drawing close to the year end, their church was behind $10,000 in their commitments, and they had no way of making up that difference. So he made that need known to the congregation, and he asked that they pray <clears throat> specifically for $10,000. Unbeknownst to them, a couple of weeks later, a gift came in the mail. It was for several shares of a stock worth about $5,000. So he made this known to the congregation, said, God's provided half of it. Let's pray that God will provide the other half. They were supposed to have a board meeting that week, but they got snowed in. And so the meeting got put off. And in the meantime, when they were finally able to have the board meeting, they approved the sale of the stock, and they went the next day to the bank to cash it in. In between the time they received the gift and they approved the sale, the stock had doubled in price. It was worth $10,000. God had specifically taken care of the need that we brought to him, they testified. Have you ever wondered why God says yes to some prayers and no to others, or wait, or I have a better idea. I've wondered that many times in my life. And I'm sure we all have experiences where we've wondered why. Today the message I'm going to speak about is on some possible hindrances to positive prayer answers. Possible hindrances to positive prayer answers. There are a lot of barriers listed in the Bible that hamper our communication with God, that impact how he answers our prayers. Because at least some of the time, it's because of hindrances that God doesn't say yes to our prayers. And we need to deal with those hindrances. But I need to say this, friends. We can deal with all the hindrances in our lives and get rid of them, and we should. But that doesn't guarantee that God is going to say yes to our prayers yet. Because God is sovereign. God is always in control. God always knows what is best when we don't. And in the final say, it is his answer to prayer that will rule. I certainly believe that when we get rid of hindrances, we will see more yes answers. But it's still God's final decision. So removing hindrances will result in some more yes answers to prayer. Removing hindrances will result in some more yes answers to our prayers. First hindrance to get rid of, not living a God-pleasing life. Not living a God-pleasing life. Turn with me this morning to Psalm 34 in your Bibles. Psalm 34, verse 15 through 16. Scripture says, the eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right. His ears are open to their cries for help. But the Lord turns his face against those who do evil. And we'll leave that there. David said, God pays attention to those who do right. He hears the cries of help to those who who are living a life that is pleasing to him. He shows favor, he gives attention. But he also says that those who are actively disobeying God, those who are not in a right relationship with God, the Lord turns away from them. The Lord turns away from them. 
It's true that God doesn't hate sinners, but he does hate the sin that they do, and that impacts how he responds to our prayers. People who are living in sin, continual disobedience against God, should not be surprised when it seems like God doesn't hear and God doesn't answer the way that they want to. The truth is that those who have not surrendered their life to Jesus should not expect God to be saying yes to their prayers. The only prayer that God will guarantee to say yes to is when they say, I'm sorry, Lord, I want to become your child. God will always answer that prayer in their lives. If we want God to say yes to our prayers, we need to trust every part of our life to Jesus and live the way he wants us to live instead of living life our way. We can't expect God to give us a positive answer when we're not trying to live the way God wants us to live. John Wesley offered this prayer every year at midnight on New Year's Eve. I'm just going to update the language a little bit. He's prayed, I'm no longer my own, but yours, Lord. Put me to whatever you want. Rank me with whomever you will. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you, exalted for you or brought low for you. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. We would do well to pray that kind of a prayer on a regular basis like John Wesley prayed it. Because it reminds us that we are not free to follow the dictates of our own sinful nature. We are free to choose to follow Jesus and live for him. We're free to surrender our wills to the will of God and submit to his authority. Not living a God-pleasing life is a big hindrance to prayer. We need to get rid of that. Another hindrance is not confessing our sin. Not confessing our sin. Psalm 66, 18. If I had not confessed the sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened, but God did listen. I love that from the New Living Translation. But God did listen because I confessed the sin in my heart. Even when we're in a right relationship with God, we sin sometimes. At least I do. And when we do, if we ignore it, we put a barrier, a hindrance between ourselves and God answering our prayers. This is what the psalmist is talking about. If I hadn't confessed it, God wouldn't listen to me. It's not that he doesn't hear it. Of course he does. He hears everything. But he ignores that request if there's barriers between us that we've put there. So this is not the same as an ongoing sinful lifestyle with no effort to change. This is talking about followers of Christ who stumble sometimes like we all do. And when we stumble, we need to confess it so that there is not a hindrance between God saying yes to our prayers. First John was written to those who were loyal to Jesus. In verse, chapter 1, verse 9, he says, If we confess our sin, God will forgive us and purify us from all unrighteousness. Not confessing our sin is a hindrance to God saying yes to our prayers to him. So, confess, and in his power, don't repeat it. That, get rid, that gets rid of that hindrance. Not praying is a big hindrance to yes answers to prayer. James chapter 4, verse 2. You want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it, so you fight and you wage war to take it away from them. Yet, you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. You don't have what you want because you're not asking for it. A non-existent prayer life is a big reason we don't say yes to our prayers. Maybe we even talk to God just occasionally or very seldom, and God doesn't respect those prayers. 
We can't expect God to say yes when we don't even tell him about it or ask him to give it to him. We can't expect him to say yes when we're just casual. Oh, God, give me this or God, give me that. And then just move on and forget about it. God deserves our full attention. And we need to not treat prayer casually. So we need to pray often and regularly to have proper communication with God. Not praying with good motives is a hindrance to prayer. James 4, 3. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. Someone wrote, as my five-year-old grandson and I were on our way to McDonald's one day, we passed a car accident. And usually when I go past an accident like that, I stop and I pray for the person involved in the accident. So I pointed to my grandson and said, we need to pray for that accident there and the people. From the back seat, I heard his most earnest request. Please, God, don't let those cars in the accident block the entrance to McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> A big hindrance to good communication with God and positive answers is asking for our own comfort and pleasure. Asking with selfish motives. Selfish motives. James says we don't get what we ask for because we're asking selfishly. We're thinking about ourselves. Our motives, our purpose in prayer makes a big difference for how God will respond to us in prayer. If we're trying to make a good impression, make ourselves look good when we pray, those prayers aren't going to be answered with a yes. Jesus talks about that in Matthew chapter 6, about the Pharisees praying to show everybody how righteous they were. And he said, well, that's all the reward they're going to get. I'm not going to say yes to that prayer. They're not going to be rewarded for how godly they were. God knows our heart and what our motives are and aren't. We can't hide them from God even if we wanted to. Our motives are the reason we ask for things matter to God. Why do you pray what you pray? What's your motives? It's easy to get self-centered in our prayer life and truly God does tell us, bring our request to him. He tells us to do that. But we're also supposed to pray for others. My goal and your goal should be to not increase our pleasure with things in this life. Our goal together should be to increase God's kingdom in this life and to become more Christ-like, not necessarily more comfortable. Pray for others that they will trust Jesus with their life. Thank God in your prayers. Worship him in your prayers. Pray for one another as a church body that we will obey and help others follow Jesus. Praying with selfish motives is a big hindrance to prayer. Let's make sure we take time to balance our prayers and pray for others and worship God in our prayers. Not persevering in prayer is also a hindrance not persevering in prayer. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 to 8. Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. Everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Not persevering in prayer is a hindrance to a positive answer from the Lord. Abraham and Sarah prayed for years and years before God said yes to giving them a son. The people of Israel appeared to have cried out to God for some time before God raised up Moses to go and free them from slavery in Egypt. 
David cried out to God for deliverance from Saul for 12 years before Saul was killed in battle. Daniel prayed many times for several days waiting for God's answer to his prayers. At various times, God made Paul wait and go through difficult times before he said yes to some of his prayers. Maybe some of us can relate to that. Maybe we've prayed for something for years before it came with a yes answer. Maybe we prayed for loved ones for years that they would come to know Jesus. And it took years of persevering in prayer. And I don't understand why. All I know is that Jesus said, persevere in prayer. Keep on asking and keep on seeking. I don't understand why he says wait before he gives a yes answer. I know I've had to wait sometimes. Darlene and I had to wait what seemed like way too long before we got our first church. I don't know why things take longer than what we think they should. I'm still learning and growing, and I don't have it all figured out. I do know that God knows what's best, and I do know that when he wants, when he doesn't give a yes answer, he doesn't say give up. He says keep asking, keep praying, keep seeking. Here's a quote someone wrote that's worth considering. They said, I believe that persistent prayer is very important, even when such prayers are not answered in the ways we think best. It's important to be unrelenting in our prayers for the changes such prayers can work in our own hearts and lives. Frederick Buckner said, Persistence is a key not because you have to beat a path to God's door before God will open it, but because until you make or beat the path, maybe there's no way of getting through to your door for God. It's worth thinking about. Our God wants to keep asking while we're waiting for the answer he's going to give. Keep seeking God. We don't have to seek the miracle, but we keep seeking God. We keep approaching him. We keep listening to what he's saying and what he's teaching us in this time of wait. Keep on asking God to make us more like himself while we wait and keep teaching us. But don't give up. Don't give up. Remove the hindrance of persevering, of not persevering in prayer. Last one for this morning. Not viewing God properly is a hindrance to prayer. Not viewing God properly is a hindrance to prayer. How we view God will impact how we pray to God and what we can expect to receive from God. I appreciate what William Ritter says. I don't know how Jesus may be disappointing you this past while, he said, but I would suggest to you that any disillusionment you may feel is not a bad thing. Because what disillusionment, if not literally, it is the loss of an illusion. And in the long run, it's never a bad thing to get rid of lies that we were taught, that we've mistaken for the truth. Did Jesus fail to come to you when you rubbed the lantern? That's because Jesus isn't a genie. Did Jesus fail to make your vehicle run smoothly when you asked? Maybe it's because Jesus isn't a mechanic. Did Jesus fail to punish those who are, don't like you? It's because Jesus isn't a police officer. Over and over again, our disappointments draw us deeper into who Jesus is and what Jesus really does. If we think that God is mad at us, that's going to impact how we pray. If we think that God doesn't care, that's going to impact how we pray. If we think that God does, is not concerned about sin, that's going to impact how we pray. And if we view God in that way, 
it's going to affect how he answers our prayers. If we think that God just loves to make our lives miserable, that'll impact it. God wants us to know who he is and approach him in the right way. And that'll impact his responses to our prayers. That's why after those verses that I read about not quitting, Jesus said in Matthew 7, 9 to 11, You parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, are you going to give them a snake? Or if they ask for a fish, are you going to give them a stone? And I reversed the order there, sorry. He says, of course not. And if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to you when you ask? How do you view God when you pray? How do you view him? Remove the hindrance of not viewing God properly by renewing your minds to the truth of what Jesus said here. This is what my father is like. He loves to give good gifts to you as his children. And Jesus should know he knew his father better than anybody else. The God we pray to is generous. The God we pray to is good. The God we pray to loves to give good gifts to his children. He loves to give what is best in every situation. That's who he is. Remove the hindrance of not viewing God properly. Again, we can remove all of these hindrances and God still has the final say, right? We need to acknowledge that. And I think next week we might very well look at some more hindrances. There's a pile of them when you start digging into the scriptures. Those are just some today. Removing hindrances will result in some more yes answers to our prayers. So start by removing the hindrance of not living a God-pleasing life by trusting every part of your life to God. Remove the hindrance of not confessing your sin. Confess it when you stumble. Remove the hindrance of a non-existent or seldom practiced prayer life. Make it a regular part of your time with God. Remove the hindrance of not praying with good motives by remembering to pray for others and worship God. Remove the hindrance of not persevering by keeping on asking and keeping on seeking God himself. Remove the hindrance of not viewing God properly. Renew your mind to who God really, really is. I want to pause for a moment. And I want to have you do a little bit of soul searching with me this morning. Did one of those hindrances grab your attention today? Was there one that the Spirit said to you, this is what you need to get rid of right now in your life? What changes does God want you to make in your life right now to remove some of these hindrances towards him? Holy Spirit, we just invite you to search our hearts and our minds this morning. Impress upon us what you want us to change, what you want us to get rid of. Impress upon us the walls or the barriers that we've put up between you and ourselves so we can act and get rid of them. We thank you, Father, for speaking today and for your word that is sharper than a two-edged sword. When your word is proclaimed, even with poor voice, it does not return void because you are God. So help us to hear and give us courage to obey. I pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Music team is going to lead us in a closing song, and then Wendy is going to come up after that and lead us in a closing word of prayer this morning.
stand for our closing song. Good, good Father. was speaking on this morning and before service the Lord just really spoke to me about my prayer life and touched on a lot of the things pastor spoke about this morning and one of the things that he really impacted on me was when I have a need to pray for myself he said pray for others take your mind off yourself don't pray for yourself pray for those that have a need and my anxieties and my fears and all the things that this world is bringing us these days disappears when we focus on him and we pray for those that need prayer so I just appreciate what you said today pastor and I love how the Lord prepares our hearts for these things he is a good good father so I'm just going to close this service in prayer 
Father, I just thank you today that you truly are a good, good Father. Just draw us deeper into you, Lord. Thank you that you are there with us always. You know what our needs are before we even bring them to you, but you want us to bring our needs to you. You desire the prayers of your people. And so, Lord, as we dismiss this service, I thank you that we have been able to gather together to hear from you. Thank you for speaking through Pastor today. Lord, I just ask that each person here with us and everyone online, Lord, will be blessed today. And as they go into this week, you will be reminded that you, they'll be reminded that you are with them in everything. And not only will we pray, but we will praise you because you are a good, good father. So go before us, Lord. Thank you for this service. Bless each one this week. I pray for good health, for favor and blessings upon each person. And I'll give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.